Elliot. Well, we are recording. We are. So, right. oh, a, a little message came up to said, by attending this meeting, you consent to recording. So I guess I consent. I guess, I guess you, you consent. consent. Consent is a good thing. Let's talk nonsense. Yes. yes. Uh, for, for, for some for some reason, I can hear me. Oh. Coming it, back through my headsets. So I don't. Is it because you're? Is it because I'm loud? You're always loud, Fraser. So I get used to that. I think it might stop now, actually. Cool. Yeah, stop now. Uh, so, are we going to put this out on both my channel and Silly Wee Films? Why not? Why not? Let's see. Why not? Let's see if YouTube get angry. Screw YouTube, get angry at everything. Screw them. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say about YouTube these days. Yes. You so, and I, we're not, we're not famous enough to um, have any kickback. <laughs> speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> so, uh, hello to everybody on Silly Wee Films. So there you go, and uh, hello to everybody on my channel. You should, to be fair, channel. To be fair, you should know who I am anyway. So, <laughs> you know. So, what are we going to talk about, Fraser? What let's, topic? What are we going to? Let's talk about why people are so mean about films and TV. Yeah. Are, they, are people mean? I <laughs> thought everybody was like chilled and really happy about everything. My YouTube algorithm, algorithm, my YouTube recommended at the minute. Yeah. Uh, it's filled with two things. First one, so I'm always going to bring it back to Doctor Who. Um, so Children Need went out on Friday. As part of that, they did a five-minute comedy sketch uh, for Doctor Who with David Tennant back. And it was a comedy sketch, right? And for those who don't know, the creator of the Daleks, the Doctor's greatest enemy, is Davros, who back in the 70s has always been portrayed in a wheelchair but as a life support system and he's got horrible scarring in his face from an accident and in this episode and this little five minute sketch they go back before he was in that accident and he was a fully abled standing man played with the same actor who's played him since like 2008 and that that was Davros and then they did a little behind the scenes video after and Russell T Davis the showrunner of the show again he did it in 2005 to 2010 He's back uh, for who knows how long. And he said that him and the production team weren't comfortable with having a villain in a wheelchair because it can cause some negative tropes. He said it's well known. But he says it's well known in TV and film that if, you know, you know, like villains are in a wheelchair or scarred. You know, James Bond did that all the time. All the major James Bond villains yeah. are disfigured in some way. And he said, this is children in need. These are children who might be different and I don't want anyone to cause that them to be excluded from anything. So from now on, this is Davros. And I'm very happy with that decision. And Doctor Who fans were very calm about it. Went, Great, cool. Moving on. No, of course they didn't, sure. No, they, they didn't. Can I can I just say that I've seen Davros throughout the years, way you know, because he's you know Davros has been in it often yeah. and, and or throughout the decades. I never even thought of that as a wheelchair. I thought it was just half a Dalek. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I never, I'm like, oh, look, a disabled Davros. I was just thought, you know what, it's half a Dalek, because it looked like half a Dalek, the bottom half, yeah. and it was fine. Yeah. And I never really saw him as disfigured. I just saw him as an alien, because guess what? There are quite a few of those in the yeah. Doctor Who yeah. universe. Uh, so I never even thought of it as a wheelchair, but, but I, mm, I don't. He's made a choice. Yeah, he's yeah. explained his choice, and you don't have to agree with him, or you don't, or you can agree with him. Because we are able-bodied people, so we can really comment on it. Mm. And but from a creative standpoint, we can. But you know, a lot of the disabled community like this, and a lot of the disabled community hate this, and are basically saying uh, the show's over. R.I.P. <laughs> uh, and 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 it's woke, right? Yeah. So let's look at the word woke. It's the, not a real word. The correct use of it or the fake use of it? Because it, nobody seems to know. If, if Apparently it is from, and I'm not a historian, so I'll probably get some of it wrong anyway, but apparently it was a, it, that word has been around since the turn of the last century, and it was a, a word that was used by the black community in America way, way back. That's what I saw in I some sort that. of article yeah, or something. That, 
Beyond that, I don't know anything about it, but I don't like the word anyway because it do- it's a word that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. I to me, to me, I I woke at eight o'clock this morning and I had a headache. I'm all right with that way, but I feel woke. No, I feel awake. I don't quite. The, the whole word just messes with my brain, so no, it annoys me anyway. The actual word is progressive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mermaids can't be black. What? No. Fictional Ex- character. <laughs> no, exactly. She wasn't black in the cartoon. Women can't be Ghostbusters. No, no. Mate. women can't be Ghostbusters because no, only, no. only, only men can. Be, you wish it was a real job. Only men can be Ghostbusters. Uh, <laughs> the, doc, the Doctor can't be a woman. Why? Time Lords can change to anything. Yeah. The Doctor can't be black. Yeah. yeah. The Doctor can't be queer. No. But it's just so basically, if you're if you're not a fully abled white person, preferably a man, then there's no point. No. <laughs> and did you see the discourse over the um, Madam Web trailer? I watched the Madam Web trailer and I thought, oh, it's quite good, actually. That, that was beyond, beyond, that was the, as much thought as I'd put into Madam Web. I'm like, that yeah, looks all right. I may watch it. I'm not going to rush off to cinema and watch it. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I'm sure the internet did. Uh, and I'll look forward to finding out what is wrong, what is in fact wrong with the trailer and the whole Madam Web thing. I can't find an answer to what a certain quarter of the internet think is wrong about it. All I get in my YouTube recommendations is a picture of an angry white man, parents <laughs> to 40s, maybe a bit older, and a screenshot from the trailer, and it just says, trash. Okay. Or bomb, or fail, and I'm like, I'm not going to click on you. No, because that's, that's no, that's yeah, don't. Want. That's what you want. But why is you? We've had this conversation briefly. Why is YouTube and podcasts filled with this movie is going to fail? This movie has failed. This TV show is over. Go woke, go broke. Barbie didn't go broke. Uh, no, Bar- Barbie, I believe, did quite well for itself this year. I don't think they're struggling. Did all right. Yeah, not um, bad. So, do these people genuinely believe that what they're watching is terrible and can't give you a reason much beyond, oh, it's woke nonsense? They can never get past this looks bad because it's woke and we're not having it. Or, oh, Madam Webb wasn't a young woman in the comics. It's like, yeah. But it's but you so yeah so I, are these I, people I, I, genuinely I, I, angry at the world and think everything's terrible or are they pretending to be angry at the world to stir up a fan base and get money from YouTube? I think it's a mixture of about fifteen different factors, and I've plucked a number fifteen just out of my nose. Um, it would be very easy to go, yes, people are angry, or no, they're not angry. I think you've got a portion. It's it's like the box office. People are looking at the box office for the overall going, oh, it's terrible, it's down, all these films are failing. Why are they failing? Uh, are they failing because of the fact that the, the Marvels are women? No. You know, maybe there's a tiny... I think it's all percentages. I think there's a small percentage that thought... Uh, to, to use the Marvels as an example. And to be fair, currently, Marvels is the 27th biggest film of the year. It's been out a bunch of days, so it's doing not too bad if you look at how much money it's, but, ma- it's making. It's down on other Marvel movies, it's a flop. Exactly. But it's not. It's not a flop. No. It's maybe it's underperforming from what some guy in an office, usually a white guy, predicted it should make. Oh, this will make a billion dollars. Yeah, oh I- no, it's made eight hundred. It's underperforming. No, it's just not got close to the what the guess you plucked out your butt. And that's what they do. They all pluck, uh, you know, it's expected to earn between 150 and $200 million on its open weekend. They pick this number from nowhere, and then when it pulls in 110, oh, it's a failure. It's a yeah. disaster. If you and I made a movie tomorrow morning, and it made $110 million of the weekend, yes. we'd be like, oh, sure, we should pack it in, mate. We're I'm just, done. Yeah. We're, not get, we're not getting the money that we want. We no, made, so I'm massively... Massively disappointed. If you look at The Flash, right? And The Flash did not do well in its box office when it yep. came out. It had a lot of problems behind it. The lead was troublesome. 
there was a lot of reshoots before it came out. DC got taken over by Gone, Gone and Suffering, yep. and, and they reshuffled everything. Except we still haven't got to that reshuffle yet, but that's fine. It's twenty twenty five problem. So they had all that going against it. So the numbers were really low on the Flash. Plus, I don't know who asked for a Flash movie. To be honest with you, the Flash TV show was perfectly fine, and um, the movie came out didn't do very well. But then on digital and streaming, it did really well. No, it doesn't count though, Fraser. Apparently, money money yeah. from digital and streaming is not real money. It doesn't count. It's nothing. <laughs> no. It's not. I enjoyed the Flash. I thought it was great. I really liked it. I annoyingly thought it was a decent film. Yeah. I. I, I mean, I was like, you know what, Ezra Miller, just get him out. Just, I don't. All your shenanigans. You're just being an idiot. Just unemployment for you. Go away. You do me a him. However, it was that person of Flash into a parallel universe, and give us another Flash. There's plenty of Flashes. There's Wally West. There's Junior Flash. You know, there's there's plenty of other flashes that can be the flash. But well, the thing is, it's like I mean, the Flash is a great example. Also, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a great example. I'm sure we'll we'll use those because I don't really want to join in the targeting of the Marvels because that's still in cinemas and apparently is a fun film from those that have seen it, including I this one. Well, we went we went we went to go see it, and Siobhan, my loving wife, went in with relatively low expectations, but she's going through. What I think is a genuine thing of superhero fatigue, Same. especially with Marvel as a whole, because you've got 18 TV shows that you have to watch to know what's go before you get to watch the Marvels. You know, there's you know there's one division and then there's Miss Marvel that you you don't have to, but you should maybe watch before you watch the Marvels. And then you've got Loki, and then there's maybe stuff going on with Kang left, right, and center. Kang might get recast or binned. Like there's just a big question mark over Marvel. And it's no longer cohesive. Yeah. And um, Siobhan is like, I'm just a bit fed up with it. So, you know. I'm I'm with Siobhan on that. I bailed out, I think, around phase four. Yeah. When I started to cut, it was the TV shows. Not that I watched the TV shows and didn't like the TV shows. I was watching other stuff. But we're not we're not getting into the discourse of the Marvel. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But it's like to to look at the Flash. So there was a small percentage that went. I don't want to watch anything that's got Ezra Miller in because uh, no, he's he's an idiot off screen. Okay, well, there's a whole argument for can you separate art from the artist? Yes, I can is the answer for me. Um, and then there was oh, DC's getting rebooted anyway, so what's the point? There was a percentage of that. Yeah. Then there was a percentage of oh, I saw it on my Facebook. Apparently, it's terrible, even though it's not come out yet. So I'm not going to watch it. I've never understood people's logic with that. Oh, this guy on Facebook says it's terrible, so I'll skip it. Make your own mind up. I'll <laughs> say, what's the matter with you? So there was that. But then around the time The Flash came out, you had Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 Jew. You had Barbie, Oppenheimer, all Jew. There was loads. Yeah. I ended up, and Indiana Jones was around that time. So yeah. there, was a, there was a month where there was about four or five big films came out. And I, even I skipped... Uh, I skipped Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny and ended up watching that on digital. I did go see The Flash. I did go see Oppenheimer and I did go see Mission Impossible. And then I just like, you know what? I need to save money because each time I go to cinema, it's not just walking down the road to buy a ticket. No. It's heading into Manchester by bus, yeah. which is an hour each way. And yeah. I thought, you know what? I'm good. I'll have to sacrifice something. And my sacrifice was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which I watched eventually and thought it was great. So. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be woke and I'm gonna say that Ezra Miller's <laughs> way, not he. I'm not a fan of it. Oh yeah. It don't ah, me. This is yeah. the one. I know. The one. That, and that, that annoy. I mean, I'm not not what you've said annoys <laughs> me, but it's just like the world we live in just massively annoys me. But it's. But like um, I I I I don't mind if somebody, uh, misgender somebody or gets pronouns wrong as long as you as long as you go. All right, sorry. Like they, they prefer being they or she or he, they, he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because you can just ask, like, because like, so my my nephew, formerly my niece, uh, transitioned a while ago, yeah. and I said to him, I said, "What pronouns do you want me to use?" And they, he was like, "He him." I was like, "Cool, perfect, fine." And then as long as, long as you know, yeah. And then my eighty-six-year-old auntie, uh, who, um, so it's my brother's son. And my auntie just got it like that. 
and just the like, no discourse, no nothing was just like, well, I hope he's happy, and I was like, oh, I love you, yeah. I love you for getting that, you know, that's and man, he was like, I know it'll be hard for your, you know, your brother, and you know, it's it's difficult for everybody, but as long as he's happy, I was like, oh, I love you for that, yeah, of so, like ally in the corner. But anyway, but Ezra, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's stupid shit. Like, there's no doubt it doesn't matter what 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 the pronouns are. They did stupid shit. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, smashing chairs over people's heads and stuff. It's like, do you know what? Strangling a fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why was that not? It? Why was that not? Why did Borners in DC at that point no not go? We maybe have to brush this under the carpet and move away from because it because the film had already been made though. Yeah. Okay. And there there be the difference because it's too much. Um, because it's like, do it again. It's very risky. I mean, it's like, oh yeah, we've cast Ezra Miller. Do we need to recast them? Well, we haven't started shooting yet, so we can do. Brilliant, not a problem. Yeah. We finished the movie that cost us. How, well, I don't know what the budget is, but I'm guessing it was quite hefty. Uh, do we throw that in the bin? It I mean, was, you know, if it was Batgirl, they would, because you know that's what Warner Brothers Discovery do. I can't um, <laughs> understand why they kept the Flash, but not Batgirl. Batgirl could not have been that bad. No, I don't think so. I, think, I was looking forward to watching Batgirl. I was really looking forward. I wanted to. I was excited for Batgirl when it was announced that Joss Whedon was doing it before we found out the truth. <laughs> yeah, no, all our heroes are being smashed but in again, the face. Again, what is it with middle-aged white men with power issue? I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm with you. So you're saying that you have to go into town and now each way get a ticket, cinema ticket. Yeah aren't cheap but they're not overly expensive so down the road if i book online at the view it's 8.99 but because i'm on on o2 i get two tickets for nine pound yeah but we also have a young child so we have to have child care we have to plan it all in advance so the yeah. cinema is a treat and then you know me i would go to the cinema every other day yeah. right but it's it's not possible anymore covid no. has taught us all that we can just wait six weeks and we can watch and- it the- and own. that's the other problem with the box office. Yeah. Is I really want to watch Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes. Uh, I didn't really want to go sit in the cinema and watch it for three and a half hours, four hours if you put the adverts in. Because I don't know about you, but I always end up in an auditorium where there's some idiot on the phone or somebody having a loud conversation behind me. Or I don't know, I'm jinxed. Like no, I'm that. I, I'm so, and that's the we sort were... of film that I want to concentrate on. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to wait for it to drop onto Apple because I know it will probably by the end of the year or, yeah. or early January or something like that. And I will sit down at home and I will watch it yeah. for the same price as a single cinema ticket. I will have a month's access to Apple and I'll yeah. watch a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Yeah. Um, so there's that. There's that aspect. I think That's the same. I, I waited to watch Shazam 2. I waited to watch The Flash. I watched the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at home. Um what else have I watched? Though? There's been a few things that I've just watched. Though. But I'm also a bit like, like especially with Marvel, just to caveat bag, mm. I feel like we're all waiting for the next Avengers film, the next team-up film. But they had 10 years or so building up Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, that whole squad, and then the extended squad. And then it peaked with Infinity War and Endgame, and it was it was a big hurrah moment. Where do you go from there? Yeah, you can't go bigger, right? Because it don't get no bigger than half the population of the planet disappearing. Exactly. I mean, maybe, maybe the whole population <laughs> of the planet disappearing. But you know what I mean, though, right? So, so once you have all that that huge moment, and then you go, and then you went straight into Spider Man: Far From Home, which was a good film. It, it just felt like a downward dip because then now we're going to, all those characters that you loved for the last 10 years they're gone now so now you're bringing in shang chi now you're bringing in cassie uh, from not cassie that's not her name hawkeyes the new hawkeye can't remember the new hawkeye's name but it's Haley steinfield and she's amazing oh and, and you're also going to bring in cassie lang for ant-man 3 so it's all new people you're going to bring them as Marvel and if people are so stuck in their ways like Doctor Who fans who are like it should be a white man or in their 50s then they're not going to accept oh by the way this is the new Iron Man this is the new Captain America so the numbers are going to be down 
I don't know what I don't know what Marvel was going to do. Like I don't know. They seem to be pushing through this slog of disappointing numbers, not bad numbers, but nowhere near what they were having when it was the original lineup. What do you, I mean, I would say that it's there's just too many films. No, I don't necessarily just mean Marvel. I mean, but although with Marvel there yeah, is, generals. there are, they should stop the TV shows. Yeah. Yeah. Keep keep Disney Plus as a library for Disney stuff and yeah. Marvel and Star Wars. So once it goes to the cinema, then however many months later, put it on the platform. Have yeah. it as a library. Stop making exclusive yeah. stuff. They're running out of the no no not that they're running out of ideas, but they're just not executing it properly. So I thought Captain America, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. I watched that and I felt that that would have been better as a two hour movie. Or be one. Would have been a better two and a half hour yeah. movie. I mean, I enjoyed the series, but that was just a film chopped um, up into little bits. Soka probably would have been better as a movie. I and didn't I, watch. I didn't watch that because I had been told, "Oh, you've got to watch Clone Wars." It's like well, I ain't got the time to watch all them Clone I Wars. Didn't, so I didn't, I didn't watch Clone Wars. I didn't watch Rebels. I didn't watch any of that, and I loved Ahsoka. Really, I'll check out Ahsoka but, then. But, but now you're falling back into that trap of you know John from Facebook says that's terrible. Mm. Why? And but it, but it goes beyond John from Facebook. Yeah, but it's. I mean, I think that there is a difference between J- John from Facebook said it, but then when you hear it from five hundred, it's yeah. like some somebody walks up to you today, Fraser, go, do you know what? You're putting a lot of weight on there, dude. You're like, I don't, I don't think I am. I've got the gym and everything. I do walking all the time. But if five, if five hundred people in a in a month go, are you putting weight on there, Fraser? You're like, shit, I must be. Because that's that YouTube. that many people and are going about that's it. That's YouTube. That is the current YouTube platform. Fail, bomb, crash, disaster, yeah. trash. Yeah. And and that I never see anything that says the Marvels is great. The Flash was amazing. Uh, another example, Doctor Who is going to be great. Like it's it, but and I don't. There are those people out there. But that's not what YouTube are putting on on top of your thing. No, YouTube are bad for the negativity, and that's it's not just film related; it's video game related as well. If you go on and do a, a oh. YouTube video about how terrible Xbox is or how terrible PlayStation is, you know you'll be showing up over YouTube and stuff. If you do one about how good it is, and how much fun video games and movies are, not so much. The algorithm is is definitely a huge enemy Stacked. to uh, to a lot of people. But it, it just I don't understand it. And was it Martin Scorsese who recently said that he thinks that there's so much discourse of the Marvels at the moment is because the men are struggling to find uh, characters that can the, they can relate to because it's women and it's women of colour and women from different walks of life. And And he said, I think that's an element of that. Martin Scorsese says... Men aren't seen this movie because they're like, oh, girls, actual quote from Mark Scorsese, more or less. And people are like, fuck off, Mark Scorsese. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who ever thought that we'd come to a point in our lives where people would be telling Martin Scorsese to fuck off? And, and on Facebook, um, I get, because I, I have a business Facebook for like my telly work and whatever. So I don't have a lot of, I don't follow a lot of groups. I've got a small amount of friends on there. So I get recommended groups to join and a lot of the like you know marvel star interview marvel that marvel that and especially for the marvels it's love like and just so many laughing emojis and that seems to be a weapon that they've got and nothing winds me up more than just a laughing reacting face because yeah, there's not there's nothing to go at with that no. there's no conversation to be had with a laughing emoji you're like i don't even know what you mean by that but are we not capable of making our own minds up anymore? I know you are, and I am, and I know a very small amount of people that I mean, I I do a lot of podcasting with Stu Miller, who's one of the most negative film critics that I personally know, and I say that to his face. Um, so if he's listening or watching, yes, Stu, you, you know, you know, I will listen to his rants for entertainment purposes after I've seen a film. And if he watches a film that he likes and I, I wasn't familiar with it, then I'll go, I'll check that out. But if he hates a film, I don't let it put me off. I'll go no. make my own mind up. 
And but people don't. I you see a lot in the Facebook comments where somebody will say, "I went to watch uh, uh, Venom Five or whatever. Oh, it's terrible. I hated it." And you will see a lot of people replying, going, "Oh, I'll skip that then, because I, I was going to watch that because I really like Tom Hardy and I enjoyed the previous four. Um, and obviously I'm making up Venom Five, and they'll skip it. And Not like, far off though. Not far. Like, right, no, not far off. They're doing the third one. But no, I don't know if they can make their mind up. Although there's a really good statistic, which uh, Robert Dyer, who I also record at Sci-Fi Wales, you know, Rob. Hello, Rob. We were there. And he and I were big fans of the TV show Bulletproof with Ashley Walters and Noel Clark in it. Yeah. And obviously, Noel Clark came under the, the, the fire a couple of years ago when his, his career just imploded because social media jury went, no, you must go away, go away. So he went away and Bulletproof got cancelled and there was, there's going to be no more series on that. And it, you look online, everybody's like, down with no Clark, down with no Clark, go away, never watching Kid Hood ever again, bang, gum. And Rob has access to the statistics on a lot of things that are bought on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And Bulletproof box sets went up about 2,000% at exactly the same time everybody was online going, no to no Clark. No. So they're saying no, but they're running out watching stuff. Yeah. So I think there's a huge two-faced element about the, the keyboard jockeys. It's also there's like now, obviously I'm not going to comment on no Clark because again, mm. if victims come forward and say yeah, 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 of course. it's been abused, then believe more than more often than not believe the victim, Russell yeah. and I- I mean, I mean, that was an example but, of me saying on one hand, people are going, no, yeah. and yet secretly they're running out buying yeah, box sets. So that's what that example was for. Same Doctor Who, all these people are like, the show's dead. Doctor Woke is a favourite hashtag of mine I'm seeing at the minute. Doctor on- Woke. That's not even too clever, really, is it? But, it and then the like, show's dead. You've only got yourself to blame, blah, blah, blah. I bet you come Saturday night at half six, sure, they'll be sitting down <laughs> watching it anyway. Well, you've only got to look at the Michael Bay Transformer films. First one comes out. First one I really enjoyed. They, you know, they are what they are. They're they're old, they're watchable, but but generally they kind of get a little bit worse. Yeah, they do. And the amount of people who are like, we don't want another one, and then the other one comes out and it does over a billion dollars, and then they're like, we're done. We transform. Michael Bay doesn't need to do another Transformers movie. Michael Bay goes, I got to do another one. We're not going to watch it. Over a billion dollars. <laughs> Vote with your wallet. I just. Yeah. But we were saying this the other day, so you've got all these people on YouTube who go, this is terrible, that's bad, podcasters, this is terrible, that's bad. No one is putting a gun to your head no. and saying, you must watch this. Nobody's yep. forcing you. You are letting a show, a film, a character, a person, whatever, fill your head, take up your mental space that you're so enraged with, let it go. Mm-hmm. You're not being paid to review it. You're no. not. You might get clicks for reviewing it, but what what does that give you on YouTube in the grand scheme of things? Zero, 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 one. But probably the same amount of money, money I get for night is day on Amazon Prime. Just like a little plug. I want, yep. I want my fifty pound. Yes. But, but the point is though, no one's forcing you. No. So why are you do? And you told me that you've got a podcaster friend who goes, "Oh, it's my duty to watch." Yes, I have to. I have to watch them to review for my show. Yeah, so that was that was the aforementioned Stu Miller. So I yeah, he, he used to do it. I have to watch them. No, you don't. But you, but that you were saying, all these movies are, are coming out, and you look at your wallet, and you look at your time, and all the TV shows that are coming out, we just we genuinely don't have the time no. to watch everything. So I am so much more picky now about what I take the time to watch. My wee boy will go to bed at about half eight at night. And then my wife and I will have two hours to, of time together so we are, before we have to go to bed before he wakes up at half seven. So we are very picky and we go, right, what are we going to watch? What, what's out now that we want to watch? And then when we go to the cinema, what are we going to go see? Yep. And before we just go see anything, but now we're like, right, here's what's on. This is what we're definitely going to go see. So I don't understand why just... It's just filled with trash, walk, fail, bomb, when you can just not watch it. I think, and I don't even know whether this is a uh, pandemic cause or whatever, but 
people are so much angrier now. I suspect they were probably angry before the pandemic, but it just feels like it's more Boy, noticeable because we had a break. We had a yeah. break from dealing with a lot of these people other than online. And then you go back out to the world and you just see the grumpiness again. But, you know, uh, which is better, Xbox or PlayStation? Well, I've got both in the house. Exactly. You don't have... Um, I'm fine. You like them both. You can't like them both. You've got to pick a team. Why? You know, it's it's mask v unmask. That was obviously it's Trump v Biden. Everything's tribal. Yeah. It's Call of Duty versus Battlefield. It's Star yeah. Wars v Star Trek. It's uh, Marvel v D. You know, versus DC. Which one do you prefer? Well, I personally like the darkness of the DC stuff, the Snyderverse. I was a fan of that. Still like Marvel movies. I think they're fun too. Yeah, but apparently, I've, apparently you can't do that. You've got to choose. I've DC TV shows over Marvel TV shows and Marvel films over DC films because I tried to like Shazam to couldn't do it. No, couldn't do it. Couldn't oh do no, it. switched it off after the first ten minutes the first time, and then I was like, no, I feel compelled to to watch it because I really enjoyed the first one. It wasn't a great film, but. One of the actresses in that, Rachel Zeigler, is getting absolute slack yeah, yeah. for existing. Because apparently she she isn't a huge fan of some of the choices that were made in the 1930s with Snow White. I think this goes back to. Show me show me the quote where she said that, because I can't find it. Is that not real? Because that's what I heard that they but were, that, yeah, but, but, they yeah, were mad that, at. That's what they're all saying. Right. But I can't. what she might have said was... In our version, we're, we're dumping the romantic subplot because we didn't feel that it was important. Fair enough. And they went, <laughs> oh, she, she's, she's, um, she's a, a history denier because, <laughs> you know, probably, they probably didn't say it, but I'm not far off. I got called a gender denier the other day, so that was fun. Why? Why did you get called a gender denier? Because I for trans people. Well, how's that a gender? What? Oh, because, I, because I'm, I'm, I, so... On Strictly Come Dancing, which is a show I really enjoy, super yeah. cast, super gay show, yeah. and they cast uh, Amanda Abington. And Amanda Abington on Twitter made some controversial comments about uh, women with dicks, um, and she 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 got tricked into thinking that there was a drag show for children, and there are drag shows for children, but she got duped into thinking there was a 12-year-old boy in drag dancing suggestively at a show. It didn't happen. It didn't exist. Yeah. But she went on this rampage on social media about how, you know, men can't be women. It's never women can't be men. Trans men get a lot less abuse. And if I'm wrong, I apologise and come talk to me. But as far as I know, trans men don't get as much abuse as trans women get. You always see the discourse towards uh, men want women, trans transitions women. So she got cast on Strictly. Everybody went a bit nuts because they're like, but she's on a show that's famously camp and queer, yeah. gay, and we don't want a transphobe on this very inclusive show. I even complained to the BBC and I got a very stock reply. But because, <laughs> I, but because I said that it was unacceptable, I was flooded on X with over 200 replies from uh, transphobes, men and women, telling me that I was misogynist, uh, I was a sexist. Uh, one called me a paedophile. Apparently... <laughs> how's, how's there a link between that? I mean, there's, it's... A link, there's, a link, <laughs> there's a link between transphobia and paedophilia that doesn't exist, right? Yeah. Uh, I got called a gender denier, I got called a clown, I got told I was on the wrong side of history. Uh, I was told to stay in my lane. Uh, they went after my agency because my agency's tagged in my profile. They went after BBC Alba because I'm doing a documentary for BBC Alba. Uh, they went after uh, my short films, blah, 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 blah. All because I said she's transphobic. So that's the abuse I got. Imagine being... Yeah, Rachel. Imagine, imagine being in, a, in the trans community and that, and you just want to. This isn't a show about trans. Uh, trans no, no, it's, this is generally a show about people's behaviour. Just being like, seriously, calm down a bit. Have a, dis have a discussion rather than take out your pitchforks. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, yeah. um, I've lost my complete train of thought of what I was saying now, and I'm genuinely lost it because I got angry. But yeah, I nearly came off Twitter because of it. But I just, there is just so, everyone's just so angry now 
yeah. over anything. Well, no, just... well, well, nobody can have a discussion, no. on, certainly on social media. I think face-to-face -face is different. I think people still have, you know, if you're in a workplace and you're having a conversation, you could still get away with a conversation. Online, you can't. No. You know, if you and I were having this transcript on online and earlier when I uh, mislabeled Ezra as a he, bang, that's me cancelled. Boom, flooded. <laughs> However, we had a conversation and it's like, oh, yeah, fair enough. Ezra, day, done. See, yeah. that's how people learn by yeah. having conversations. Because I don't know about you, but I don't get newsletters saying, actually, <laughs> uh, and this is maybe a question you can answer and I'll say it carefully so I don't get cancelled. But the word queer, mm -hmm. right? I'm old enough that I remember when that was an that was you couldn't use that word. That was an offensive word yeah. for gay people. You couldn't use it. Yeah. And then somehow, and I don't genuinely don't know when they've taken it, it back. It, they've took it back, and it's Take become it a word that you can use. Yeah. Now there are no updates as to actually breaking news. You can now use that word. So it's there's a lot of that that goes on, and I think a lot of the pronoun stuff is probably that where people are like. Ah, 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 no. So I found out that queer had changed uh, for the better when a writer friend of mine, James, a uh, wonderful writer, did Cox Monsters with me, did a lot of Origins work, and I plan on stealing him back. Uh, but he described himself as a queer writer. Were you not like, <gasps> And I was like, no, I was like, oh, OK. Well, that must be it then. And obviously the, the LGBTQT plus, yep. it goes on and on and on. I, I don't want to get it wrong. But I know it's LGBTQT plus. So the Q in there is queer. So that so when you put that together, you go, okay, well, there you go. But you're right. There's no newsletter. No one knocks. <laughs> there's no news. You, you don't get a knock on the door. But it's also, but I think it's also our duty and responsibility, especially as people in, in the media, to, to educate ourselves on that. And yeah. you're great. I said to you, just so you know, the pronoun, the edge of the prayers is they. And you're like, okay, cool. Up, yeah, up eight. Software updated, <laughs> yeah. moving on. And then when you found out about the word queer being taken back, you're like, okay, software updated. It's yep. not hard to read and learn and speak to people because otherwise you fall into the 5G brigades who are like, oh, 5G is going to track you. They're yep. going to be monitored. They've got spies in our schools. They don't know. And, oh. you know, COVID, you was, know, COVID if, was a... Was a, was a fake and blah, blah, blah. Mass. If people want to monitor my life, just go ahead. Seriously, yeah. there's better things to watch than my life. It's they're trying, just, to, tr they're trying to track our behaviours. You're literally on a smartphone. Yeah, exactly. On Facebook, sharing your location. <laughs> I, I know somebody that will not have an Alexa in their house because they don't want to be listened into, but they have a smartphone. Same thing same thing in it so can it's like if you be in tracked you'll be you tracked with that on our facebook and google after this call yeah <laughs> it's just madness but, but the, di the difference is it's like you know you have conversations i i don't like the fact that if so to use the pronoun thing as an example so somebody's online and they reply to a comment going oh it's a miller but i use the wrong pronoun is that the abuse that goes towards that person rather than the conversation that we just had yeah it's just bang get them get them yeah. and then this poor person comes off social media and thinks i can't cope with that yeah why is there not why are we not allowed to make the mistake and learn from that mistake why why is that now there are some cases where you should absolutely be kept away from uh normal safe happy people yeah people, people who abuse people sexually mentally etc yes go down in a fire <laughs> but if you make an innocent mistake or i make an innocent mistake and we go that was a mistake. We didn't know. Now we know. Let's move forward. Oh, look, now Fraser's trying to backtrack out of what he originally said. Yeah, look at him. Oh, that's no, not a I, say, I saw Fraser apologise. That didn't look genuine to me. Yeah. I know he was crying and stuff, and he, he was all red-faced and looked really apologetic. I'll, I, you know, he's been around actors. He knows how to act. That's, yeah. It's that sort of stupidity. It's yeah, like, there's no, genuine. There's no defence. There no. is no defence. So, again, going back to Russell T. Davis being called an ableist and be calling this, that, and the other because he's decided moving <laughs> forward, this actor will not be portrayed in a wheelchair. This character will not be portrayed in a wheelchair. They're like, well, why did you not have that problem when you used him in 2008? Because like, he changed his mind. Yes. He evolved. He learned. 
But also, we live in a different world. Yeah. Because the world is evolving. In some ways, it's evolving good. In many ways, it's evolving not so good. But it's it's changing. We were watching, uh, we've been watching Grange Hill. So we've been re-watching that from the very beginning. Now, Grange Hill was a children's show uh, set in a school that started in the late 70s. Exactly. So we're now on like season 11. Um, to go for when did it start? Uh, season 31. You've got a wee while to go. Many years. We're currently around 1986 at the minute. Have but we done Just Say No? We've just done Just Say No. <laughs> yep. We're now on the Danny Kendall, uh, Bronson sort of years. Uh, but on those very early episodes in the late 70s, oh my God, the racism. I can't even repeat what they would call some of the the black kids in that show and that was a kids show that was on the bbc that was high profile yeah and so at a time at that time i don't even want to say it was acceptable to say that but it must have been because it was on the bbc prime time on a kids show so it must have been Absolutely. okay to say that stuff yeah now it's not now you would never i'm not even getting away with saying it on youtube <laughs> but in a kids show it was times change um a lot of the you watch go back to watch friends Mm-hmm. The whole oh. Ross's Ross's wife's a lesbian, all this sort of laughing and giggling and stuff. You wouldn't get away with that now. But you, no. clearly it was acceptable in the early 90s. Yeah. So yeah. the world's changing. So as to why Russell Davis didn't do it in 2008, different world then yeah. as it is now. And like you said, he changed his mind. They also keep using this great excuse of, so there's a character in Russell's second season, so 2006, played by the great... Oh, what's his name? He was Trigger in... Oldham. Roger Lloyd Park. Roger Lloyd Park. Yeah. He played a brilliant scientist called John Lumick, who, in a parallel earth, created the Cybermen, right? Yeah. Weeks before filming, he Roger had an accident and broke his leg. So, for the purposes of the filming, they put him in a wheelchair. Yeah. Because he broke his leg. But these fans are now going, well, you didn't have a problem making John Lumick a disabled evil character. It's like... No, he was in a wheelchair because he broke his leg. <laughs> I think I think the changing of the mind is the best way, though. Yeah. Because it's like there's two there's two def- I don't know word defenses, but so we're we're it's not defense. we're not going to have Davros in a in a wheelchair, even though I just learned it was a wheelchair. I always thought it was half a dollar, like, but never mind. So you've learned. I, <laughs> a lot of people will go, "Oh, you why why what's wrong with having him in a wheelchair?" Why is it a bad thing showing a disabled Davros? So you've got that tidal wave of chaos coming back, which is just, I don't think you can win. You can't win. But they also they also did a thing. So before Russell took over, it was Chris Chibnall was running the show and it was Jodie Whittaker. And she was wearing, her, her outfit wasn't overly feminine, um, but it also to me wasn't kind of, neutral overly neutral and when david came back when he regenerated his clothes burned over her clothes and he was in his suit already and that happened that happened in old doctor who where so when william hartnell changed into patrick Troughton back in 1966 the clothes changed no explanation for it because you didn't know what it was but russell explained that decision because he said with the current state of transphobia in the press and in the news and with the Tory government in particular, I didn't want there to be any sort of abuse hurl that trans people with David Tennant appearing in a woman's outfit. I and just, I'm sure there wouldn't have been Fraser. Oh, God, no. No. But he said, I just wanted to avoid it. And then Russell D. Davis was getting called transphobic. <laughs> I think it's a bit, and I always use this as an example, to describe some people. You go, do you know what? Some people are so miserable, you could literally say, here's a million pound in pound coins, and they would be like, am I going to carry that home? <laughs> you know, that sort of, and they would. They're just never, ever happy. It's the, the the George Lucas thing. We want more Star Wars after Return of Jedi. There you go. Here's the Phantom Menace. That's crap. We want another one. Oh, 
but did you want more Star Wars or did you not want more Star Wars? No, this is the one I chose to make. We wanted, this, we wanted the Star Wars we had when we were kids. Okay, here's the Star Wars you had when we were kids. Oh, this is just a rip-off of the Star Wars we had when we were kids. This is just a copy of the original one that I loved. And I don't like this new one because it's just like the old one that I still watch many times. To- I, I don't know. But th- I think we just live in a very angry world where... Um, and you see it a lot in politics. And to be fair, they're probably a bad example yeah. to use because they're all about they're all a bunch of clowns. To be fair, they're all like, "Hey, what the other person's doing is terrible. What we'll do is this." And then when they do something good, then everybody the opposite side's like, "Yeah, what you're doing is terrible. We would do that." It's just like, will you just grow up? Yeah, for the no, love I of God. It. If you want to get into politics, I already don't like you because no. You know, I don't trust you already because you're 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 not there to serve the public. You're there to serve another purpose, probably yourself. Yes. So don't get involved. And saying that, my father-in-law is a really good politician who genuinely cares about the community. But those who are in charge tend to want to be in charge for a reason. Yes. And I I don't and mostly tax breaks and giving all our pals contracts. But we're not going to get into politics. As no, no, no. We stick with the movie business is enough to focus on it. But it's but it is very similar though. It's just it's an anger, tribal. But do you feel crazy that, thing? Do Do you feel it's unjust or do you feel like it's fair that film fans, loose term, celebrate a flop? No, I I, I divide them into two camps. So let's say. I'm going to say Cops and Monsters 3, right? Like the, the movie franchise has done one and two were great. There's got to be a third one, right? Uh, so I go to watch Cops and Monsters 3. I think it's okay for me to come out of Cops and Monsters 3 going, I preferred the other two. Didn't like the story that Fraser had written for this third one. Yeah, wasn't yeah. impressed with the acting. And I thought some of the visual effects were great, right? If that's the case, in this weird fantasy world, right? Because I've seen the film. Yeah, yeah. What I don't like is, oh, Fraser's making another Cops and Monsters? Oh, that'll suck. That'll be terrible. Oh, it's going to flop big time. I don't even know who's in it yet, but I bet oh, I bet the cast are awful. That's the ones I have a real issue with, because it's like you've not even seen the film. Yeah. I don't understand it. I just, I don't understand why people are just so quick to celebrate failure. And again, just going back to Doctor Who, because I think it's really toxic. You say to these fans who go, oh, it's not what it was in 1963, <laughs> right? And you go, well, what would you prefer? Would you rather the show was just cancelled and you had no more Doctor Who? Yes. I, rem- I remember this. Would I remember you remember ra- this. Uh, Foster films? Yes. I don't get that. It was to say I use uh, Escape from New York. is amazing. I love that movie. It's Escape from L.A.? It's not as good as Escape from New York. Still fun, though. Because we get to spend more time with Snake Plissken. Yeah, it's fun. Bruce Campbell's and I, second one, And right? Bruce Campbell's in it, and uh, Pam Greer, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, do I watch Escape from L.A. as many times as I watch Escape from New York? No. Is it as good as Escape from New York? No. But am I glad it exists? Yes, because I got to hang out with that cast and listen to another John Carpenter and Shirley Walker score and just generally enjoy same, it. Same with Highlander. I love Highlander, one of my all-time Same. favorite films. Highlander two, not as much. I will always defend Highlander two. But the <laughs> Renegade cuts, yes, where they take away the alien side of it, I enjoy. And why do I enjoy Highlander two? It's because Sean Connery and Christopher Lambert's chemistry are so good. Yep. In that film, like, like you said, we get to spend an hour, hour and a half. Yep. Post. But will I watch it as much as the first one? No. Will I watch Police Academy 7 more than I watch Police Academy 1? No. But I'm glad that it exists. And yeah. from a selfish point of view, I'm glad that filmmakers, writers, runners, camera people, sound people, crew, publicists, uh, I'm glad that people are getting work. Yeah. But yeah, it, you've got these idiots who, I mean, to be fair, half of them probably don't even buy movies. Half of them probably obtain it from sources right. they're not supposed to. And yet they feel so entitled yeah. And so much ownership over this. Well, I loved Ghostbusters 1984, so how dare they bring another one out? Because it'll ruin the original. It won't, but for some reason, they think it will. You're also not 12 anymore. <laughs> and I think that's a big problem. It's like, if I think, uh, if you look to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, if that came out in 1981 or 1984, if you want to go Temple of Doom, 
they would be like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. This is fantastic. Buckets of popcorn and everything. But because they don't get the same warm, tingly feelings that they do when they were 12 or 10, in my case, who read as Lost Ark, they're like, this film sucks. It's because you're not a child anymore. I know. Well, there's also this discourse of that you don't want to watch your heroes get old and frail and die. Yeah. But what I always thought the appeal of Indiana Jones was is that he never let his age bother him. Yeah. Like, Indiana Jones isn't a superhero. He can't fly. He can't shoot blasters out of his hands. He is just a man who's an archaeologist who hates Nazis. Yep. That's it, right? And I love that line in the fifth film where he's climbing up with uh, Elena, uh, Helena, and he's like, she's like, are you all right? And he goes, my back's done, my hip's been replaced, my wrists are bad, I've got arthritis, and I'm climbing a wall. And I just love that. And what did we get with the, the attacks online at Phoebe Waller-Bridge? She's terrible. She ruined the film. I watched it thinking, uh, and I wasn't a fan of Fleabag. It's just not my type of show. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've seen it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm sure she does fine. And I watched Indiana Jones. I'm thinking, oh, here we go. Let's see what this character does. And I'm like, I don't get what everybody was mad at. <laughs> I really don't. I still to this day oh, cannot in- see why they were all going, she yeah, ruined it. Yeah, it's Indiana Jones, not Indiana Jane. It's like, it's still not Indiana Jane. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's do not, they, f- they not, forget that Marion Ravenwood and Kate Capshaw and um, I've forgotten uh, Dooley or whatever from the third one? I've forgotten her oh, name. Oh, oh, Alice? Alice, the yeah, Alice Dooley, yep. Yeah, she was great. But so, she was a great sidekick in that film. She was. And she was her own character. And I love that they absolutely jumped the shark. Yep. <laughs> like, I was all. I was like, oh, see if you're gonna see if you're gonna do it, do it. If you're gonna if you're gonna spoilers, if you're gonna spoilers, spoilers. Yep. If you're gonna travel in time, do it. Yep. And they did it. And I exactly. loved it. Exactly. I had no issues with that. And Crystal Skull, I have a couple of issues with that. And they still exist, you know, the flying yeah. monkeys and you know I I was explaining to Rob, who'd never seen Crystal Skull until earlier this year. Right. So, but he'd heard all the discord. He's like, "Oh my god, it's the worst film in the franchise. It's terrible. Don't watch it." And so he was aware of all this, but he didn't know the specifics. Mm-hmm. So he watched the film. He enjoyed the film, and then he phoned me up and he said, "Can you tell me why everybody's mad at this film? Because I genuinely don't know." I said, "Well, my issues are the stupid flying monkeys and all of them. They're just daft. Yeah, but it doesn't. Right. Th- but it doesn't ruin the film." No. I said, "But the biggest issue is the picking up of the hat at the end by Shia LaBeouf," and he's like. Why? I said, because back then, everybody really thought that there was no, there was going to be a new Indiana Jones that was going to be Shia LaBeouf. And he was like, yeah, but that would have been fun. I'm like, not back in at that time. They genuinely thought, because he knew, obviously, that yeah. Indiana Jones was coming back. <laughs> um, and then I rewatched Crystal Skull. I'm like, it's not that bad. It's, I, it's just, fun, other than those two issues. I love but, the great chase for the school. I love hmm. that. Um, I love when he's when they're like chasing the, the Russians through the forests and yeah. Marion's doing the banter and he's got like rocket launchers and stuff. Cover your ears. You know, it's just, it, it was great fun. But it's too far-fetched, Fraser, because it's got aliens in it. It's not realistic like the other films with the magic rocks and the ark that has dust in it that melts magic Nazis. Magic God. Magic God. A yes. That can make you immortal. Exactly. It's, it's not realistic like those ones. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But it's, it, it would, I think I know what the problem is. People. People. But yeah. more specifically, I think people are allergic to fun. Yeah. I think people, I think a large amount of people, obviously we don't mean everybody, but you know, you know who you, know who you are. And if you're not sure who you are, then it's probably you. you. Um, is they've got to go in and analyze a film. Can we not just enjoy it? Apparently not. Not if you've got a website or a podcast. No. YouTube. Or a social media account of any yeah. kind. You can't just go, I watched a film. I liked it. Can't do that. You've got to you've got to analyse it and rip its ingredients apart and dissect it and no. I wholeheartedly disagree. So do I. See so the thing, I. See but but the Marvel says, and again, Siobhan went in with low expectations. Not for any bad reason, she's just superhero petite. And I, I saw the trailers and I thought, this looks fun. Mm-hmm. The dynamic between the three leads 
and what we got was a fun hour and 45 minute, a tight film, time-wise, that goes straight into the action. The shortest one ever, Fraser. Marvel are losing it. This is a, such a short movie. Bail, yeah. bomb, bomb. bomb. <laughs> but if you, well, if you sit down and watch that film and you don't get joy from Amanda Villani, I probably said her name wrong, but Kamala, Miss Marvel, if you don't get joy from her being this grassroots superhero who's thrown into space with her idol and fights alongside the other two women, um, very attractive women, I'd like to point out. Another reason I don't get why these fans... <laughs> they're angry because they can't get with the women because they <laughs> wouldn't get with women. They've never touched a woman in their no. life. But if you don't get joy from her face as she meets Nick Fury on a space station and fights some bad guys and she's like, hi, and is really cute, if yeah. you can't get joy of that, you are soulless. I love the Marvel, Miss Marvel TV show. It's one of the only two shows that I've seen. I saw season one of Loki, and I watched all of Miss Marvel. And I just want another Marvel Miss Marvel movie where it's, it. where it's just her sitting down with her family, she's, just having she, Thanksgiving she's lunch be, or something. She's going to be a powerhouse in Marvel because she's written a Miss Marvel comic that's come out. So three issues are out right now. I only know this because she was on Seth Meyers the other week. And she was talking about it. So I was like, I'm going to go and buy that comic. Yep. So I, I think she's a good next like, young Avenger. I think she, I think her energy is so good. I think she'll be, I think she'll get season two. Mm -hmm. Because they set up at the end of the Marvels, her meeting the new Hawkeye. Kate Bishop, that's her name. Kate got there in the end. I played her in the Lego game. There, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So I think if, if you, so Madam Webb, Marvels, Doctor Who being a woman, Helena from Indiana Jones. If you don't like that and you're so angry that you have to do an hour long video, we're doing an hour long video defending it. If you have to go and attack that, you're either sexist or racist. There's no other words for it. No, and, you, and you come after me all you want. You can't say to me, oh, I, I don't like it because it's a bad story. Story's fine. Go write your own story, see how you get on. Yeah. Oh, I can't identify with the cat. It's when, it's when they were talking about doing a, a black Superman film. Yeah. It wasn't Superman being cast as a black actor. There is a genuine super, Superman comic where it's another Kryptonian and he's black. And people went mental at the idea of a black Superman. And they went, and and the and the the white man's defense is always, you don't need to recast these characters to be different genders or color, or race, um, give them their own stories. That's more interesting. We don't need a black little mermaid. We don't need a woman Doctor Who. Just make her another companion, another doc, another Time Lord, and let her have her own adventures. And we'll keep Doctor Who separate. It's like no, these stories already exist. Do you nope. just read them? One thing that does niggle me, I'm going to go back to the Ghostbusters in a second, and I'll try and phrase it correctly. Hopefully you know what I mean anyway. But when Ghostbusters, the 2016 one came out, Great it film. did annoy me. I liked the film, but the whole marketing angle of it going, hey, look, they're women. Hey, look, they're women. We've got Ghostbusters, they're women. We're doing a woman's Ghostbusters. It's like, just make a Ghostbusters film with a woman cast. Don't use the fact going... They're women. Look, we've got women as your marketing angle. And, it, and that probably ties in with the Black Superman thing as well. It's like if you're making a movie yeah. and then you go watch the Superman movie and it's like Michael B. Jordan or something in the role. It's like, da, 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 you go, wow, cool Superman movie. Yeah. I don't like it when they go, we're making a Superman movie. We're making it black. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't use it as a marketing tool. Yeah. Just make the film. Yeah. Don't make someone's gender or race a novelty. Yeah. And I, and, I don't think Paul Feig went in going, I want the world to know that this is the woman's Ghostbusters. No. I think he went in going, I'm going to make a Ghostbusters film with four of the funniest women that I know. Yep. And some brain, brain head, some smarty pants at Sony went, I've got a really good idea. We're going to market this as a women's film. Yep. And that's the mistake. It's using that as a mark. You hear the same thing with James Bond where they're like, we need a black Bond, we need a Jane Bond, we need this, and 
everybody's like, we need a black one. Who can we who can we get? Find the nearest black one. Idris Elba, you'll do. And he's like, I don't want to be the black James Bond. I if you're be- asking me to be James Bond, that's a whole different conversation. But don't just pick me because. Yeah. You know, and I think there's the marketing angle that that niggles me. And I think that also inflames a lot of the dickheads who are like, what? Black Superman? No. There are no black people on Krypton. This is outrageous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who recently, and it it goes back to this, and it's like um, <laughs> someone put uh, someone was on the set when they were filming the Christmas special, and Judy Gatwa from Rwanda moved to Scotland when he was young, uh, raised in Scotland, studied at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. He's on set in Cardiff wearing a leather jacket and a kilt, and on Twitter, Doctor Who's dead, Doctor Who, look what's <laughs> on, and you need the comments down, and they're like, well, why do you think it's dead? Oh, they've got them in a skirt. And someone said, it's a kilt. And then someone says, well, that's cultural appropriation. And they're like, well, he's Scottish, so it's not. Also, you don't have to be Scottish to wear a kilt. I know many people who aren't Scottish who wear a kilt. Yeah, yeah. I don't wear a kilt. Prince, I don't, you know, King, King Charles, nearly mis- mistitled Charles then. King Charles, I've seen him wear a kilt. As nah. I know, he's not from Scotland. Par- Parasite in chief, as Christopher Eccleston calls him. But... <laughs> it, it, but it's but and I was like, oh well, he's Scottish. We know he's not. He's from Rwanda. Yeah, but he lived here. Yeah. You don't sound Scottish anymore, but you're still Scottish. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't. So it, it's. I there's a guy called Mister Tardis. He won't watch this, and um, he describes it as right wing brain rot. And I have to. I have to agree. Yes. <laughs> We're just so angry, and it's just like, and I love that we're here, we're an hour in, and it doesn't feel like we're an hour in, and we're defending choices that people make, Yeah. because there's so much discourse again, like, it's just so more popular to be angry and to hate something than it is to celebrate it. But it, I, but, but it's more tiring, you obviously know from yourself, because you've lived a life, but it's so much more exhausting being angry and miserable than it is to go... I watched Expendables 4, and yeah, it's kind of a bit cheesy, but, you know, it was all right. And then move on and go talk about something else. Yeah. I mean, I I always go back to, I was a seven-year-old kid, and I went to the cinema, I was taken to the cinema to watch The Cat from Outer Space. And yes, I was seven when I watched it, but I've seen that that film since, and it's like, it's The Cat from Outer Space, and it can talk through this little collar. It's fine. You bring The Cat from Outer Space out now, oof. Oh no, well, that makes no sense. Why would a cat be? People just just analyze stuff rather than going. Do you know what? I've just spent eighty odd minutes watching a film about a cat that can talk because yeah. it's from space. It's fine, but they get angry about it and they're going to dissect it and you know, oh, I didn't like this film because it didn't explain where the cat came from and how the how the helmet works and I need to know this and I need to. You don't need to know anything. I don't need to know how Superman flies. No. I just know that he gets his power from the sun. Yellow sun good, red sun bad. Kryptonite kills him. I don't need to. How does it kill him? How? Do, well, yeah, tell me everything. I don't care. Just no. suspend disbelief. Watch a film. Yeah. Enjoy it. You'll be fine. Or, or don't. You'll be fine. But, but I can't imagine what it'd like to be a filmmaker though. Nowadays, like I mean, you are a filmmaker, so maybe you can answer some of these questions. But it's like, would you or are you concerned about? Anything you'd make in the future going, well, have I got anybody in it who's who ticks this box? Do I need to have somebody that ticks that box if I do that? You know, it's because you've got all these bunch of strangers waiting on the keyboards going, come on, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. First of all, I, I won't read comments anymore. I don't have comments on my YouTube channel. You don't? Like, but it goes up as a box. And the reason it's blocked is because there was a, a filmmaker back in the day called John McPhail. And John mcphail has gone on to make quite a good living for himself. He's he's he did the um that zombie musical Christmas film a few years ago, a few years back. Yeah. Um I genuinely can't remember the name of it. I met that I met one of the other writers on it. No, he, I know the apocalypse by the John. I know the right. apocalypse, thank you. Yeah. And I met one of the writers from it, and he was a lovely guy, and he was going to work on a project of mine, but it all fell through. But um, John took it upon himself when I did Night is Day, a non funded web series where we had no money, and he went on every single Night is Day YouTube video and left a 
horrible comment on every single one of them. Literally, he must have spent an hour and he just hit them one after each other. And I'd never met John before. I knew of him, but yeah. I never met him. Uh, nowadays, it would just be a, an eggplant, right? And a yeah. name and a bunch of numbers, but it was John McPhail, clear as day. Years later, I took one year later to a film festival, my most well received project I've ever done. And I met John because he was showing a film there too. And he was like, and he saw me sign in at the desk. And he went, Oh, Fraser, my God, oh, it's so nice to finally meet you. <laughs> Love your work. And I was like, You are so. Yeah. But, but rather than go 10 years ago, John, you did a really horrible, shitty thing. Rather than getting, and maybe I should have, maybe I should have, but instead of doing all that, I was like, yeah, yeah, nice to meet you too. It's, so it, it, it doesn't stress you out at that moment when you're like, oh, you too. And you yeah. move on and then you go about your day but you're and do what you want to do. Tick boxes, etc. you know, people are ready to pounce. I think I'm just now more aware of it. Like, predominantly, my projects are white and scarily so. But when we do casting calls in Scotland, and Scotland is a predominantly white country, yeah. right? and especially in the Highlands, and I've looked at the statistics, I'm not being horrible, I've looked at the numbers, and when I do a casting, you know we did 10 episodes of Cops and Monsters, right? So mm-hmm. we had a lot of casting. We wanted Star Now, Mandy, Casting Call Pro, the whole, the whole base group, the whole, the, whole, the whole shebang. And I rarely got non-white actors apply yeah. and i never ever ever say this is a white person's role this is a black person's no. role it, i just want to see the best people for it yeah so but i am more aware of it and i'm working on a musical that is very low key and we're going to do some workshops for it and then i'll try and open it at the fringe in a couple of years but i purposely put out purposely for one of the support leads I said I want somebody who's non-binary or trans like it doesn't matter man woman whatever non-binary whatever I want it I specifically want to see people from that neck of the woods yeah but nobody's put their name forward nobody so it's hard it is really hard and for Origins for Leoc which is like the next big project that we've been working on since lockdown we are aware of that we and we've had conversations with big producers or whatever, and we absolutely will not have to, but I want to have a, like a trans character or a character who has a disability that doesn't make them an evil James Bond villain. Like yep. one of one of our characters has got has got progressive MS, and that's going to be and that's going to be dealt with because he's going to find the Scottish devil and wish away his illness. Yeah. You know, and, but does his illness define him? And we're going to work with MS groups to make sure we get that right. We're going to work with trans communities to make sure we get that right. You know, um, Debbie Moon, she's a, a, another queer writer. You know, Debbie's a lesbian. And she loves the fact that we have lesbian characters and Origins of Leon because it's all about representation. And the writer's room, she insists that it's a 50-50 split between women and man and non-binary, etc. whatever. Because we are the people. If we're, if, if we're in a position of power, we are the people that make that change. Yeah. You're but leading by example, aren't you? I think it should be not. And I'm not like, hey, here comes your savior. No, I'm, no, not at all. But you're, you're one of many, many, many saviors, or at least should be. But we, we, have, we have a responsibility to open doors. So, yes, I'm more aware of it, but I don't feel like it's a, a I don't feel like, oh, God, it's a gun to my head. I need to have a trans character. I want to, mm. and that and that's the difference. And I remember, remember Gamergate, when mm. horrible men gamers were angry at women. <laughs> yeah, women don't play games. Yeah, um, <laughs> and like Felicia Day was like, she goes, I used to see a guy with a geeky game T-shirt on, and normally I'd be like, Hey, how are you? Now I cross the street. Because they were giving out the addresses of like women game designers and coders and story writers and whatever, and saying that's an address go get her. That was happening. And when I went on Twitter and I was saying this is appalling, you know, women are just as qualified as we are. They're a place just like everyone else. 
you know, not, you know, they're a person as well as your sister, your mother, your auntie, your cousin, your niece or whatever. They're human. Why are we treating women any different than we are men? I got called gay. I got called sexist towards men. Oh, it's amazing you can talk with a cock in your mouth. It's like, so... Just say, so, so I saw, right, just on that one, right? So I know the, the guy who got me into podcasting way years ago, like 701 episodes ago, and somebody used that very same thing to him. God, that's amazing. You can type with a cock in your mouth. He went, oh, sorry, your mum was breastfeeding me. <laughs> was was like the best reply ever to the cock in the mouth one. But, but so, you, so, you de- so you defend women, you're gay, yep. you defend trans people you're a misogynist well, apparently i don't yeah. know but there needs to be some sort of guidebook which explains all these things to oh, us because yeah. i don't understand them i want a venn diagram yeah to know where i sit so it, there's just there's there's no winning but yeah I'm, I'm more aware of it now um but it, but i don't care like they, they, they would come after me if i didn't cast any people from different walks of life they'll come after me when i do and that's the thing, isn't it? It's, it seems that nobody can get anything right. Whatever you do, there's a program down here on Channel 5 called Jeremy Vine. So it's like a debate show, which I watch because I like listening to people debate. The topic's usually stupid. Storm and has, I watch it for Storm. She's Storm's amazing. She's better than Jeremy, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so I was on the Facebook group this morning for that. And one of the topics was, is it okay to break the speed limit? Right. That was a simple question. So I just managed to answer this thing first, saying, well, in the case of an emergency, like you've got to get somebody to hospital or whatever, then, yeah, it's fine to break the speed limit. Somebody came back going, no, it's wrong. Call an ambulance. I went, but an ambulance may take three hours. No, it won't. And they were just like instantly coming back at me for me going, if it's an emergency and somebody's dying, take them to hospital. I said, in brackets, this is hypothetical because I don't drive, so don't be coming back at me. (laughs) But they're just so angry at everything. You do this, they'll be mad at you because you didn't do that. You do this, they'll be mad at you because you didn't do that. You do both things, they'll be like, oh, you're cramming too much in. It's just if, there's too if, much anger in the world. If my son started choking and went blue in the face, and my choice was get in my car and drive 90 to the hospital, yep. or wait for an ambulance, I'm in a car doing 90. Exactly. So no. it's, a, it's a no-brainer. It's like, well, that's what I do. Well, no, you shouldn't. Why shouldn't I? So wait for an ambulance. Might right. take three hours. So you let, no, I'm sure it won't. Let my son choke and die then. Great. Yes. <laughs> now you're just being dramatic, Fraser. <laughs> Fuck off and die. That's all I can say to that. And I'm but sorry. If I've, and I'm sorry if I've lost your monetization. I swear. I have. I haven't even got any monetization. So screw YouTube. They they won't monetize me because they're mean and horrible. What is nice though is that there are people like you and I out there who are happy we are film fans yeah, yeah we love movies and tv fans we you and i can call each other up any day anytime and we can chat for two hours about films that we watch tvs that we watch and we go i really enjoyed that well i really enjoyed this you've yeah. got your list of 150 films that you love i'm currently on and you set me that challenge to do 100 and i'm currently on I think I'm on, I'm on like 143 at the minute. So. 72. And nice. I'm on my list. And I was like, it's fairly diverse. It's mostly movies from the 80s. <laughs> yeah, well, I looked, I put my list on and somebody instantly came back going, you've no films before 1957. I went, well, not on that list. On the other list I do. On 150 I do. Because I've got uh, Wizard of Oz will be in that new 150 list. But they're instantly going, ooh, something missing. Well, how about you focus on the ones I've put there? Enjoy those. Look at those wonderful titles instead of going, you've not put something on. It's insane. It's a lovely warm day today. No, it's not. It's cold and miserable. I'm sure it'll rain tomorrow. <laughs> Brilliant. You looking forward to Christmas? No, it's too expensive. Well, no. just avoid it then. Well, I can't avoid it because I've got to buy presents. Well, you have to buy presents. So I don't want to. <laughs> pick, pick a lane. Pick a lane. Stay in that lane. It's just it, like you were saying, it takes so much more energy to be angry yep. than it does to just enjoy things. Like, I can't wait for the next Ghostbusters film. I and, can't wait for it, but I'm not 
Uh, and I saw somebody reply to James Gunn because he'd, he'd shown a picture of the page one of Superman Legacy or whatever. It was like Superman Legacy by James Gunn or something like that. Was it, was it just the title page? I think it was, yeah. Right, yeah. So I saw that and the first comment back was somebody go, oh my God, I can't wait till 2025. And I'm like, that kind of annoys me because it's like, this, at the end of the day, it, it's going to be maximum of three hours, this film. Yeah. Don't be going, is it 2025 yet? <laughs> so you can watch a film for three hours. I that, love movies. I don't love them that much. That's like at the end of the... Always comes back. At the end of the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who 10 years ago. Can't wait 10 years for the 60th. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just go about your life. Films are meant to be entertainment. Just, you know, and distractions from your everyday life. Don't... They shouldn't be... Unless you're making them, of course. It shouldn't be your be-all and end-all. No. Of, I, I am... I, I am wrapping this up in 15, uh, in 15 minutes. Yeah. For my next thing. But... I, I am venturing back into the world of film. I have not made a feature film since 20... Started shooting in 10, 20, 10, 2010. Post was up to 2011, then it would premiere it at the film festival in 2012. That's how long it took to make a film back then when you had no money, right? Yeah. So, and we had a great experience on it, had a bad experience on it, all around the board. The Glasgow Film Festival took it as long as it was the premiere, the world premiere, it was. You could go buy the tickets, but there was like a comment section underneath and I got blasted by a troll who claimed to be in the TV and film industry and claimed to know what they were saying, made quite egregious lies about me that weren't true. Apparently, I don't let anyone play in my sand pit, you know, that nonsense, even though I am an extremely collaborative person. Well, you've, you've let me play in your sand pit. Yeah. I was just a tweeter in a, you know, my little website, the podcast and stuff, and I've hosted panels for you and stuff. So it's like I've played in your sand pit, so we can debunk that one. Already planning to bring you back into the whole. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So the cast and crew all jumped on to defend it. But I was 21, and this was my first ever film, and this was my first ever film festival. And when I went to the organisers, this is really bad. This has, you know, you need to take the comments off and, and close the comments. They're like, we can do that, but they would have to pull your film. Wow. It's a 21 year old filmmaker and it's his first film. So you nervously go, oh no, okay, it's fine. And so the abuse continued right up to the point where the film came out. We sold out in 11 days. We were the second film to sell out at the film festival, beaten only by the Muppets. Those, those but, flipping Muppets. Damn you, Kermit. Damn you. But <laughs> I'm venturing back into filmmaking. I've got a great producer out in Australia, uh, Dissentium Films. He is very supportive. He's got plenty of success under his belt. He's got some really exciting movies coming out soon. He's doing well. He likes me. He and I are working on this film. And for once, I am genuinely excited about making a new film. Because I don't have to direct it. No. (laughs) My directing days are good. But I have not. So you called me a filmmaker there, and I was like, but I'm not, though. I'm a writer. But predominantly, I was a filmmaker because I did a whole bunch of short films. But because yeah. my work now is predominantly TV or web series, I much prefer the banner writer. Okay, I'll go I, for that. I'll check. That's your pronoun, then. That's my pronoun. Writer. <laughs> writer. But it, not... In, not in, around the world, but in Scotland in particular, in, in the indie film scene is, I think it's a bit better now, but when I was in it, it was so toxic and it was so bad. And pe- and much like well, this whole conversation was the, the people in the industry in Scotland would rather see you fail yeah. than succeed. And they would, these are my toys, you can't have them. It's, it's like that in the podcasting world. There are a lot of podcasts I listen to who will never mention the name of another podcast. They'll say, I listened to another show at the weekend and blah, 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 blah. They will never mention the title because they are so petrified of, oh, no, my listener's going to go listen to theirs. Oh, no, they might not listen to both. How are they going to manage two podcasts in a week? And they won't do it. And I don't give a monkeys. It's like, I'll happily. I mean, all the stuff I've been doing for a decade, like all the web articles, I don't make any money from that. I do it because I love movies and I like supporting filmmakers and all that type of stuff because films are awesome. They've helped me through my childhood and they've got me to to adulthood with, with entertainment along the way. I've learned about cats from outer space and 
assembling <laughs> Avengers and the wars <laughs> in the stars and Ghostbusters, a black man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All that sort of stuff. In but, the spirit of yay people, hmm. I would like to shout out to it just came to me. This wasn't pre planned. Dean Structor, D E D E A D E A N Structor. Uh, good friend of mine, runs a YouTube channel, desperate to get up to however many, I don't know how many subscribers he's got at the minute, but he's desperate to get up to the, the next milestone. Like you, he's always got content coming out, so go support him. Go with him. Uh, Dr. Freedom, great YouTuber in America from Ohio, who gives the truth about Dr. Who's stuff. He's not a horrible hater. He's just... <laughs> No, he says even because he I'll support whoever's the doctor because that's what we should do. Um, so go go look at those two people. Uh, oh, and Who Culture, um, which is more business. It's more like what cult? It's a what culture arm, but they nearly got cancelled like a couple of years ago. But they're the only like proper affiliated UK Doctor Who YouTube thing, and the people who write it and the people who present it, Ellie Little Child is great. So go go support those people. Yeah. Cool. Be supportive, and as you know, so my final thing would be: if you watch a movie, you don't like it, don't worry about it. There is always another movie or another TV show that you can watch. If every movie and every TV show was great, there would be no great movies and TV shows because the benchmark would just be leveled, and everything would be amazing, and then you know, yeah. nothing would be amazing. So, and that's you watch a you watch a film, you don't like it, get over it. Not every film's made for you. No. No. Life's too short. It is. Life is far too short. And I, I have, ever since having Harrison, I have reached this wonderful zen-like state. I am in a really healthy relationship where, you know, we're solid. My wee boy is great. My telly work getting better. Got a documentary coming out at the end of the year on an actual TV channel. I'm writing a film, film that's definitely going to get made. I've got to meet with a Hollywood producer tomorrow for Origins of Layup. It's it, there's no point. I'm still going to get wound up about things. I'm I'm not an, I'm not a robot. But it's so much easier to just take stock of what you've got and what you enjoy yeah. in life and just go cool. I enjoy that. I I, enjoy, I enjoy talking to you. We're going to do this again. I'm we are. Right. And I'll always be aware that whoever's watching this, you're going to go and watch a film. And guess what? It's not going to be the best film you've seen that year. It's it's the, the it's the odds. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Not every film is going to be amazing. Because it don't work like that. Comments open? Yes. Oh, I can't wait for the Marvel haters to come. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it in. Anybody who wants to leave a comment, just do. Leave comments. I'll answer them. Fraser won't, but I'll answer them. Your no. comments are off on your channel. No. They're on. If you watch it on youtube.com slash from page to screen, come over <laughs> Silly Wee Films and leave That's some comments. And point, I probably shouldn't say anything that will offend people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go for it. I don't care. I, I did, and I, I told you the story the other day where I'd watched uh, a film called In the Fire starring Amber Heard, and I watched it, and I reviewed it, and she was really good in the film, genuinely. And I'm like, come on, social media, come after me. Come after me yeah. if I like an Amber Heard film. Nobody did. I was massively disappointed. I was all ready for a war. Didn't get one. I went I went out for a rare war against Doctor Who fans the other day because they're all sniping at Rusty Davis for being too woke. <laughs> Famously queer writer who wrote Cucumber, Queer as Folk, Years and Years, to name but a few. Oh no, he's making a progressive Doctor Who, even though Doctor Who has been progressive since 1963. First <laughs> producer and a gay yep. Indian director, carrying on. But yep. I went, I went after Doctor Who fans yesterday. I was like, see if you don't, see if you don't like what this Doctor Who is, fuck off. Yeah, just don't watch it. Right. And I said, yep. I said, I said that. The, the fandom is better without you. Go watch the Doctor Who that you prefer. Leave us alone to enjoy our Doctor Who. Nothing. Nothing. It's hugely <laughs> disappointing. When you're waiting for a fight, you're like, come on. You don't get it. It's when you're not expecting one and one comes out, you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? But I've not fight. really had that either. But I was ready I was ready for a fight. And um, I just, I, it was not afforded to me. So they're all talk. Yeah, they are. There's a guy who, who built and this is me wrapping up, a guy built a TARDIS phone box and he and he said that he's he's dissembling the old girl because he cannot promote the 60th anniversary knowing that Russell T. Davis is in charge, right? 
and uh, he goes and I, and I feel like I'm protecting her in a way of all the memories we have that are so loving first of all it's a wooden fucking box yeah it's a box isn't it yeah. second of all you've got 54 <laughs> followers <laughs> yep it's like get over yourself I'm protecting her Russell's, no. Russell's not reading your tweet going oh I've lost a fan <laughs> Uh, Russell's not like, maybe I need to rethink my entire strategy for this new Doctor Who. Come on, guys. We're changing. Back to the writer's room. Come on. I just, no. I just hope that when Ghostbusters comes out, Frozen Empire, I really hope it pisses fans off. Of course it will. Because but... so, Ghostbuster fans are so entitled. But until that, we've got Aquaman 2 to uh, set the internet on fire when that comes out. That's the next biggie, isn't it? That'll all make people mad. I choose, not, I choose not to watch it. Yeah, same. Same, because it's like, I'm all right. I'm not for any specific reason. Just like, you know what? I like the first one. It was fine. But I'm good. There's plenty of other stuff I'm trying to catch up on from years the, ago. The trailer looks fine. Yeah. I just don't fancy it. No. You know what I want? I want a Mummy 4. Yep. With get Brendan. Brendan back and Rachel Weiss. Yep. Don't do don't do this to me. Don't don't not have Rachel in it because no. I even enjoyed the third one yeah. as much as you can. But there was quite a gap between two and three. Yeah, there was. Um, but with this Brendan Fraser Renaissance that's happening, yeah. I want a Mummy Four. Bring it back, Mummy Four. And if people go watch it and they don't like it, it's fine. Exactly. It's not a problem. Don't blow a gasket or it's any any body organ. Don't do it. Just move on to the next movie. Go back and watch the first two. Yeah. The first three. It's I showed, fine. I showed Siobhan the first film. It came out in 99. Yep. Phantom Menace time. And uh, Siobhan had never seen it before. And she preferred it to Indiana Jones. Oh, no. Well, do you know what? I, I, she's Could not be gener- wrong. Generational. She's she, not wrong. It's an opinion, isn't it? Yeah, and it's fine. Yeah. And guess what? It's fine. We're not going to cancel her. No, no. That's a problem. Can't. Really, no, that's what's it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Well, I always enjoy having a catch up with you, Fraser. I like the fact that we're now back in touch. I like the fact we're doing this. So you have to have a good old think about a topic. Uh, once again, hi to everybody on Silly Wee Films, uh, the YouTube channel. So because yeah. this is going out as audio as well on my podcast feed. So sure, I will probably just whack it out as a video and yeah. put my comments off because I don't need John McPhail. <laughs> And I'm putting it on. I'm putting it on the front page of screen one with the comments on. I never. Because I, I don't care. Bring them I on. I never did that. Receipt so it didn't happen. I know what happened. Yes, exactly. Because you were there. Um. But yes, yeah, always a pleasure. Always a joy. Uh. Let's just talk nonsense. We've got plenty to talk about. There's plenty coming out. Um. Let's talk about the decline of the Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> decline how dare you sir right now cancel your next meeting we're going to talk for about an hour and a half on that one but um, i'm up for that discussion no no i have to go speak to i have to go speak to my agent now so well, you, you go speak to your agent i'm going to go speak to my manager uh, annette downstairs and Perfect. see how she's doing Perfect. all right Thanks. pleasure take care Fraser. next one bye bye bye